Hello guys and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II World at War with our Allied playthrough. It is July, July 16th, 1943. The war rages on. In the last episode, we moved to this turn and took on China, dealing with Japan, preparing, sneaking more units in, all that fun stuff. Eventually, we'll definitely, well, we might want to send more HQs over, one more to each side to fully encompass all of our troops as we're starting to add more to each front rather than to open any new fronts as the Japanese have not been leaving us many openings. We do have the invasion of Italy to continue. We'll take the first army with its prepared attack on the enemy garrison that has moved up to interfere with our progress. We'll take the Bradley HQ and just move that right up to Brindisi and take that and the town here. We do have a rocket artillery that can move forward. We got really, really lucky that it was a distance away from this submarine, I guess, unless it arrived there after. We're gonna sail over. And now we have rocket artillery in Italy. I'm gonna upgrade this tank because it can actually get advanced tanks too, and that's pretty important, not just for the AA or anything. This army is just going to move forward. The South African HQ is going to move forward. That will leave the actual South African units some more room to move. The first army can just move forward as far as it gets, really. I can send the third army on the left here, or I can send it up here. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Not really. I'll send the third army forward to here. All right, send the first army forward. We have, well, technically both South Africans can move forward. But there's not enough room here to actually get both attacks off. Let's move the one in the rear forward first. Can actually get better attack chances due to its superior experience despite being a core. That's funny. Let's go ahead and use the core then. Got a good attack. The Americans are just going to take damage no matter what due to their lack of experience. The South Africans are so experienced from fighting in Africa, like Ethiopia, that they just don't have that problem. And with that... We've secured Naples, and hell, we can move up even further and attack the Gazoni HQ, which is down here now, dealing four damage and knocking them back. Holy crap. We are absolutely blitzing through here, and I totally did not expect that. Hopefully, you still have range that can reach up there, but if you don't, I'm sure he does. Honestly, at this rate, I don't know how they're going to hold Rome for more than one more turn. Certainly, Munich can hold out, but Rome, oh, I don't think so. We have, simultaneously, the Sudan Defense Force Corps over here that can go after the enemy bombers in Venice. Five damage dealt. Pretty awesome. And then, well, either swap you or move you. Well, something's going to have to happen. I'll, I'll move you north is what I'll do. We'll move forward the 10th Army and have it also attack the enemy bombers at Venice, the enemy German bombers at Venice. Destroying them and securing Venice, which is a national morale objective as well. Alternate capital. Oh, it's an alternate capital just like Naples. So Rome, Italy has three possible ones. I don't even know what this is going to do to their national morale. Losing both Naples and Venice that quickly. And then we could also get to Milan or... Is this, is this town called Bologna? Or is that like Bologna? Um, well, anyway, if we could take one more of those, that would certainly help. The problem is most of our troops are back here and too far away. They have not been moving fast enough. So looks like we're going to have to probably want to move these fighters. Hmm. This Greek HQ is not getting up as far as I would want it to. But I'm going to send it forward as far as I can get it because it's not going to be needed back here, I'll tell you that much. We have Greeks, Sudanese, and Brits all competing to move forward and keep up. We'll reinforce the Epirus army. This is a good time to have anyone that doesn't need to move, not move. <laughs> now, let's see. We'll take the Macedonian army. We'll send that forward as far as it can get since the Greek HQ is moving up. What else? This core does not have the ability to reinforce at the moment. The Rhodesians can get these elite reinforcements, however. Hmm. Quite an interesting situation. 
The tanks can move up that far. They don't have any more upgrades. The Brits don't have their next level of tanks. We'll send the tanks forward. That sounds like a good idea. Artie, that is going to be a bitch to try to get forward. Even with mobilization, this place is just awful. We'll have to force march it just to get it through these hills. It is still the case, however, that this core simply cannot go far enough. There's Italians here, so we're not going to want to push too hard, too fast here. I'll probably move the Desert Air Force fighters just all the way back here where they'll get a chance to resupply. The Greek fighters here can resupply a little bit, but they're not attached to any HQs. So, actually, no, they were or are attached to HQs, but their supply is still just so shoddy down here that it doesn't really matter. These anti-tanks, the last thing they need to do is push forward too far, so we'll just put them over by niche for the time being, serve as a defensive fixture. Tactical bombers that can function, even from here, holy shit. <laughs> even against enemy bombers. <laughs> hmm, you know, that's not bad. I was thinking, oh, let me get them elite reinforcements, but this is actually not a bad idea. If I can weaken the enemy German bombers here and make it easier to crash through this way, that could really help. Let's go ahead. Let's do it. I don't even think I had any escorts for that. No, well, we still didn't take any damage, so these fighters must be fucked. We've hurt these bombers. Anything to make them retreat or die faster. Because if there's less Germans over here, I think it won't be as easy for them to capture the rest of Italy. I think. I know there's events for that. I've skimmed over the strategy guide, finally. And kind of seen some things like that. We want to move the first Sudanese court forward for sure. Definitely get that moving up. Now this fucking thing. I will move this core as far up as it can get. We will force march this up the road this way. You now can't really get any farther, so let's give you elite reinforcements. Same thing kind of goes with you. I've held you back intentionally. I want to move the Greek HQ ahead of you to take the pressure off the British HQ. So let's go ahead and give elite reinforcements there, slowing our advance a little bit, but it's fine. The Greek second corps here can get another elite reinforcement, so we'll go give that to him as well as one for you. They're all very experienced. I wonder why. And experience really counts for a lot. That elite reinforcement aside, just having the experience really really helps in battle calculations what are we looking at over here I'm trying to see where i could actually move planes and leave them i'm gonna leave the fighter right here because this will actually definitely be in good supply and it is open as much as i want to push out from venice i believe the italians will just retake what i've taken if i do that so i'm not going to do that we're going to move slow and steady we're not in a rush with the allies and we are about to win in 1943. Quote unquote, about to win. You know, we're kicking ass at the very least. I can't wait to see what Italy does. Even if they do get captured by Germany, it would be so hilarious. Rome still has to fall before that anyway. But it would be so hilarious for Italy to die first when, I mean, realistically, Germany was set up to die first. The only reason this is going to go as quick as it is is because I sent the Americans over here. Because these things are not really as useful as they could have been in the Pacific. Not to mention the South Africans are proving to be of help. These rocket artillery is going to be fucking useless. Absolutely useless. Hopefully the supply improves that we can operate or something. I don't know, probably not. We have mobility. So that works out. The Mediterranean here has some stuff to look at. I think I'll just continue to stress the ships that have already lost stuff. In terms of planes, we'll go ahead and bomb this destroyer that's popped out. Rather than lose points off a ship, which is super duper expensive. We'll just send some planes out. Planes are a lot cheaper to replace. And voila. Another dead Italian boat. Now let's see if we can finish off the enemy submarine. Ooh, one more. Someone dies from attack? Oh, it got away. You're lucky. You're lucky. I don't actually have a single destroyer over here. <laughs> Escorting my fucking surface fleet. Nope, not a single destroyer over here. No siree. Let's go ahead and upgrade the Prince of Wales battleship. Let's go ahead and reinforce the Greek heavy cruiser here. 
for the reasons that I discussed in a previous episode, I believe literally the previous episode. Um, I could cycle more things over here, but I'm not really seeing that that would be very handy to me right now. What I have going right now appears to be handy enough. We can definitely get that Desert Recon going. Yeah, and this Bradley HQ, you know, I might even send the Brits over here. I, I really... It could come in handy right here. Well, we can't land at any of these places, so it wouldn't be able to get anywhere on time is the downside. But, you know what I'm realizing? I don't know how true this will hold out, but as the American HQ gets closer, it does have a free spot. It can maybe reach over and provide some supply to a British unit over there anyway. Looking elsewhere at the Brits, we have another upgrade we can do to the Glorious Carrier, Naval Weaponry, making them more effective against ships. Don't know what good that's gonna be, but that'll be something. <laughs> we also have upgrades that we didn't, we weren't able to afford last episode so let's go ahead and one last turn in general let's give all the canadian destroyers their next naval weaponry and etc upgrades get them all up to snuff we know where a lot of the german submarines are they're in norway for one and they're down in former spanish ports that i guess they really desperately needed or something I want to get the Courageous Carrier heading down south, but we do have this submarine to worry about. However, we can still get far enough, even if it sees us. It's not going to be able to really do anything. So, we'll start sailing down here, getting another carrier back down to the front, the naval front. I will sail destroyer here, because we know generally where the enemies are. We're also going to want to set up in areas to make sure they're not going to try to get past us or something and go exploring and looking to see if they are at all trying to get past us all right nothing up there let's sail up here even though i'm not using this path it's still a path that they are nearby and it's worth keeping an eye on we have several more destroyers capable of going out let's have you go out here let's have you go out here these two are going to head south, pretty far south in fact, because that's where all the German subs are down here. I think my Atlantic strategy has been effective personally. Maybe not the most effective thing in the world, maybe a couple things I could have done differently, but I think I handled it fairly well, especially for just learning the game. We'll send these destroyers down here to keep an eye on that. We don't need as much over here as I have put over here to be honest. Yeah, no, we don't need this much. I'll just put the one here like I was going to originally do and send the other around south. Can't quite get as far now, but bleh, who cares. So, Paris. Paris, you're very hard to fucking attack. I don't have any artillery. Best thing I could do is strat and tack bomb you, which is going to trigger every fucking German fighter over here, of which there are a lot. And we can't quite kill any. I'm just going to pass a little bit of work over to the Soviets here, get an attack on some of their fighters. But, I mean, even that's not going to be enough. Paris has a ton of supply. Well, not a ton, but it has enough. It has a lot of entrenchment. And there's no easy way to go about it. The easiest thing for me to do would just be to kill everything around Paris for the time being. Because we still don't have any Canadians. We do have... Well, actually, we might. Yeah, we have a first army of Canada that we can deploy. Okay. Go ahead and deploy that. We have all these garrisons, too, that we want to get moving to Spain. So let's garrison one, garrison two, garrison three. Get all that deployed. Now, okay, these guys are in supply. They can kind of start reinforcing. I'll deal with that after. I just don't really know what to do about Paris. We don't have the firepower to overwhelm it, unfortunately. You're actually still kind of in supply. I'm kind of amazed. All right, well, we'll just reinforce things on the French front for now. It's not actually that important. While taking Paris would be great and would definitely hurt the national morale of the Italians, they don't have much left. And quite frankly, I don't know what's going to happen to Paris once the Italians are dead. France in general will probably like swap and the Italian units might disappear. I'm unsure. Something like that could happen. Let's upgrade this Canadian Corps. Upgrade anti-air this Canadian tank. 
Nothing on an actual front can get upgrades or anything like that. We're going to be very passive here, though. Upgrade the Alexander HQ for the time being. We don't really have enough over here. Elite reinforcements for the TAC bombers. Elite reinforcements for the strat bombers. And maybe they'll be more useful in the next turn. We have no diplomacy chits to allocate. We do have research that we could do. I will go ahead and start researching some of it. We'll get some more ASW researching. Get some more AA researching. That's 217 left for us. We have 1825, so we can fit one more research. All right, then we can fit in the heavy bomber research. Just going to go real heavy, cap that research out, because I don't really have much else I feel like I should be doing as the UK at the moment. We're finally catching up to things. Again, the UK never has enough MPPs. I haven't said that in a while, but they don't. At least in my game, they don't. I did fiddle around with testing, getting this into a long-range amphibious transport, but let me tell you, this 100% of the time plops out right here. I don't know why. It won't go here, it won't go here, so I can't get into the port. It goes right here. There's a sub around here. This will get murdered. So because I cannot choose where a long-range amphibious transport goes for you, I can't do anything. We also have the first South African army. That could move up. Unrelated to what I was just talking about, I haven't looked at this screen in a long, long time. And it looks a lot different than when I last looked at it. With France and allies in the beginning in general, you can't avoid taking losses early on, especially when America enters the war. And I would think typically when the Soviets enter as well. Not to mention Poland. But I went ahead and added up everything on each side. And in total, just in terms of units, excluding what types of units, we have lost a total of 69 units since the beginning of the game. And the Axis has lost a total of 182 units since the beginning of the game. And that shit really adds up, as we can see. There's only one nation, one major, that has not lost any units, and that's India. Which is in great part due to Japan's failure in Asia and just China in general. China's only lost three armies since the start. And the funny thing is, every one of its losses are armies, specifically. Not cores, nothing else. Armies. One of them was in an amphibious transport, and the other two were on land early on. It's funny. I don't think China should ever be this efficient, but we just got so lucky, I guess, that it worked out pretty well for us. Yeah, I just thought we'd look at that. Anyway, let's get that South African army moving up. I don't think we really have to worry about this sub, so let's just go sail our happy ass over, drop down at Syracuse, and then chill out for a little bit. The first South African army has arrived, the only South African army, and it's probably not even going to make it to the front before Rome falls. Now let's look at India, who has 217 MPPs. We're going to reinforce the power troops. We're going to reinforce the tanks. Definitely get that going. We want to keep an eye on these partisans. We can get the garrison up close enough to defend against the partisans. We still cannot reinforce this. God damn it. Too far away from the source of supply, sadly. But now that this garrison's adjacent, that's taken care of. So, the army and special forces can move the same distance right now. Let's send the special forces forward first. Securing Bordeaux for the allies. Thank you very much, India. And then Vichy still over here. But as we move forward, we get closer. We get this whole Indian force up here. And then we'll definitely be able to overwhelm Paris, which is why I'm trying to take this a little bit slower. Because I'm going to have like, the Indians doubling our units up here, for fuck's sake. It's kind of funny. I think I might force march this just to get it moving up north a little bit faster. It doesn't need to be moved normally. And I don't think it can be operated. No, not transport. Damn you. Operated? No, because we don't have supply over here. So I'll go ahead and just force march that bitch going up. Get it up to the front sooner rather than later. We can't quite make it to Bordeaux from where we are. We don't need to. We just need to move north. So let's just start heading north. Everything except the special forces here are going to move, or well, stay. Land-wise, that is. I'm not going to force march any of the actual frontline combat units. Let's see, our planes can move up. Here goes the tack bombers, and here goes the fighters. Woo! I like how they just teleport over there if they can't draw like a perfectly straight line to get there. <laughs> I am already noticing though, all these extra MPPs really coming in handy for India now that they're getting this stuff. 
It's a shame their flag's not showing on Madrid like it does for, like, over here. Zagreb, capital of Croatia, has the British flag on it. Oh, also, looking at the Brits, didn't even think to do this. And I've still spent all my points. Yugoslavia, man. Look at this. We can reform the HQ and then get an army and all these cores going. Like, Yugoslavia can field so much stuff. It's not going to be needed. But... It's cool, isn't it? But the remaining Indian MPPs will spend it on some more research because we definitely need to get that going. I'll get some better ground attack weapons for the time being that would directly help my planes that are over in France. Although it will take forever to get that, so maybe not really. But it's a good usage of it, of their newfound MPPs. We have the 3rd Marine Special Division blah blah over here, which I'm going to send down to Nauru, like I said, and... Hey, this is working out better than I expected. The Japanese actually left the entire island undefended. So, this is now the UK's again. A few episodes ago, I gave a speech about how, like, oh, the Australians can help liberate stuff, and it doesn't matter if it goes to the UK anyway. And I realized for liberation, it doesn't even work like that. Liberation, so long as it's not Russia or China, it will just go back to the original owner. It only really matters who lands on it for, for example places that we occupy like this one like fucking this one. Oh my god i hate this place let's go ahead and just start bombarding the shit out of this again i know you're there and i know you have one supply so there's no way you could have reinforced that much i know i know things bombard this port too it's fine let's take a peek I'll have you bombard first. Alright, let's take a peek. How's it looking? They're still at 5 strength for what it's worth. However, <laughs> getting through it is just so difficult. I don't need to get hung up on this. I really don't. I could just bypass this. But, oh my god. This is a very hard location to take them off of. Tara wouldn't ne be nearly this hard. Look at this. We have several spots, probably, where we could land. Tara would be a lot easier than this truck isn't even defended but i think we could still land like right here guam you can land somewhere else even iwo jima fuck's sake any we talk oh my god i don't think you can land no you can't this is probably one of the hardest to besiege islands in the pacific and the only reason i'm getting hung up on it is because i don't even have all my special forces in one spot anyway they're still making because i lost two of them and Japan's dying to China anyway. So. We could do some damage. We could do some more. That's for sure. However. It's mother fucking special forces. Just won't fucking die. Ugh. I could try bombing some more. Just hit him with everything we got. Ugh. Ugh. This is the most lethal... Special Forces unit in the entire world. <laughs> it's just the island itself is really what it is. We'll get some medium bombing off as well. Which did not really go any way that is very positive to me. We have the ability to load up some long-range amphibious transports with our new Special Forces units. Which can just move one step because they're going to come over here. Now... I could keep doing the same thing. These bombardments I'm doing, most of them are pointless. Except for the fact that they probably give me XP. So I'm kind of like grinding is what I'm doing. And so I can do this other attack and then send this somewhere else as well. So I'm not just sitting here forever like I could accidentally end up doing. And then wait till these other guys get over and put their attacks and then go from there. And I could try... Oh, oh okay. I could send this one after it does its attack. I could send it westwards in the direction of truck because I know that's not defended. I okay, okay. Do have to be careful though. We know there's a submarine around here. We know there is. All right, let's do that. Let's get our attack off. Three damage dealt. Oh, why won't you just die? Well, hopefully the lack of supply it has will stop it from reinforcing much further. When we board this on a transport again, we can use that as well. For now, I'll definitely just start sailing this westwards towards truck, although we'll want to be careful. Because we know this is going to be pretty 
vulnerable. Go ahead and just bombard this some more for some godforsaken reason. We probably won't need the carriers for any further nonsense that we do over here. I'm going to take this so... Oh, what have I done? Oh, God. Okay, cancel. Okay. I'm going to sail this sub up here to kind of guard this special forces. I'm also going to do a weird thing and form a, like, screen with battleships while I'm at it. I mean, why not? Let's go ahead. Ah! Let's go ahead and just surround this bitch so that it doesn't take any damage. I don't care if they run a fucking submarine up here or whatever the fuck. Let's see. Texas Battleship. You could just go, like, right here and upgrade from there. You don't need to go back here. We'll go ahead and reinforce this. This heavy cruiser can go down southwest and join up with the rest of the fleet. I'm I'm gonna probably leave these heavy cruisers back here and this light cruiser here. But the destroyers, the destroyers are actually gonna move up. Because if we're gonna run into any enemy submarines, it's gonna be up on the front. So it makes the most sense to get the destroyers out there. Let's go ahead and just check up again. We want to make sure, yeah, we just want to make sure that truck is and stays empty. And I guess the same with all this crap. Yeah, this is just also completely empty. So we cycle an attack and then we send our Marines to all these other islands and national morale objectives of Japan that are not going to be actually defended. That's my idea. It's a way to do this without wasting any time. And I'm glad I thought of it before we have ended up wasting any time, technically. No research to do as America. We've pretty much done everything we're going to do as America. There's no more plane upgrades. There's no more garrisons to waste my money on unless I go to Brazil. That's just really, <laughs> that's just really looking for money to waste. Mostly for ASW purposes. I'm going to go ahead and start recruiting some more of these maritime bombers. Damn, look at step one, step two, and then step three are the same. And then bam, look how futuristic that shit looks. I think it can get better. That's the long-range aircraft that's really upgrading it. I guess that's its main stat. Surprised it's not like one of these, but oh well. That's not a bad thing. We're going to go ahead and purchase maritime bombers. And then purchase more maritime bombers. And then purchase the final maritime bomber I can get. So three maritime bombers that will arrive in January of 44. So just after the end of this year. Be pretty good. 75 MPPs remaining as America. I could I could get a torpedo boat. No, I don't think I'm really gonna use that on anything actually worthwhile. Emphasis on that, because now, now I will go look at Brazil. Now I will give them upgrades. <laughs> there, 25 MPPs left. Garrison in Brazil upgraded. America's MPPs, I believe, well spent. We have our plan figured out. We'd be further along in the Pacific if I hadn't lost my original two special forces that were over here. However, at the price that we suffered, you know, destroying the Japanese fleet, the surface fleet, almost to its entirety, I think was totally worth it. That leaves us with just really the USSR to deal with, but we are out of time for this episode, so we're going to have to handle that on the next one. For now, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.